So a lot of real-world systems can be modeled as a sequence of independent experiments. So for example, I keep on flipping a coin, I keep on observing what I get on each toss, right? That's an example of a series of independent events. So sequences of independent events. So a special case of this, which I just kind of alluded to, is what's called a Bernoulli trial. Fancy word for coin flip. Okay, All this means is that um, every sample space is binary. Either I succeed or I fail. So um, each sample space is binary, you know, zero or one, tail or head, failure or success, um, you know, error or no error, disease or no disease, right? And the underlying assumption is that I do a series, a sequence of these experiments, and every outcome is independent with all the previous outcomes, right? So we assume that the probability of success is some number p, which means the probability of failure is 1 minus p, and those two possibilities carve up the whole sample space. And that's the same for all experiments. Spelled that wrong, and they're all independent. Okay, and so if we assume that we have these Bernoulli trials, we can suddenly start to compute probabilities in a fairly easy way, right? So, for example, you know, flip a coin five times. What is the probability of observing the sequence head, tail, head? tail head. Okay, each of these flips is independent, so I have uh, probability of head times probability of tail times probability of head times probability of tail times probability of head, right? So each of these things, well, I guess I didn't say what, uh, let's assume that I'm generically saying the probability of getting a head is p. So in this case, I have three successes, two failures, and so my result is p cubed times 1 minus p squared. Okay, and In general, the probability of getting any given sequence is um, p to the number of successes times 1 minus p to the power number of failures. Right? Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. But now say I want to ask, okay, um, what is the probability that I got three, exactly three heads out of five? I don't care what the order was. So I could say, what is the probability of three, exactly three, out of five heads? Well, now we're back to combinatorics from a few lectures ago, right? So each one of these uh, outcomes has probability p cubed times 1 minus p squared, and now I have to ask how many ways are there, how many ways are there to assign the positions of those three heads? There's five choose three ways of getting exactly three heads. Five choose three, remember, is five times four over two times one, so it's going to be ten times whatever this probability is. Okay. And in general, I could say, what's the probability of getting k, exactly k, out of n successes in a Bernoulli trial? That's like saying there are n choose k ways of getting where those k slots are, and then I have k successes and n minus k failures. So this is kind of the general formula for this exact kind of problem. Okay. Um, I keep on saying exactly. What if I change this slightly to say, what's the probability that I have at least 
three out of five heads. Well, I have to take this apart to say, well, I could get exactly three, or I could get exactly four, or I could get exactly five, right? And remember that since these outcomes are all, or these events are all disjoint, I can add up the probabilities. So I know that I have five choose three ways of getting exactly three. I have five choose four ways of getting exactly four. And then I have five choose five ways of getting exactly five. There's only one way that can happen. And so I can reduce this to, without knowing a value of p, I can just kind of reduce the combinatorics to this number, okay? So um, now I want to say one more thing, and this is related to, we talked about an experiment where I keep on flipping the coin until something happens, right? So I could say, um, what is the probability that the first head occurs on the kth flip? So the sample space here is infinite, right? I could get a head on the first try, the second try, the hundredth try, or the millionth try, right? So I have lots and lots of possible outcomes, and I can compute that what has to happen is I have to fail k minus one times, and then I have to succeed once, okay? And so this is like k minus one fails, then succeed, and then I stop flipping. Okay, and this is called the geometric probability law. And so now I've assigned a probability to each of the possible k's, right? One, two, three, four, five. Just to be sure, I should really check that if I add up all these probabilities, I should get one, right? I should get the overall uh, sample space, right? So here I'm just going to move stuff around. I'm going to take the p out, and I'm going to renumber uh, this k to go from uh, 0 to infinity. And I have 1 minus p to the k. And again, this sum is our old friend, and we know the answer to that is 1 over 1 minus whatever this thing I'm multiplying by is, which is just p times 1 over p, which is 1. Right, so I confirmed that, yes, all these probabilities add up to 1 as they should. And we're going to talk more in a lecture very soon about, uh, now we're starting to get into this idea of enumerating probabilities for all the possible outcomes in the sample space, and that's going to lead to what's called a probability mass function, which we're going to talk about in a couple lectures. So stay tuned for that, and the next lecture will be a couple more examples just to get you used to working with these kinds of problems.